All right, slivers. I'm sorry to say though in the beginning of this video that slivers aren't really able to put together a really strong deck. They're only something of a semi-competitive deck currently. The reason is simple. The combo that they are trying to assemble demands a lot of mana. Let's actually look at it. So here is the four sliver card combo that will assemble a infinite token with haste and infinite mana. So here's the trick that you first activate this ability to generate a token sliver. Now because of this ability, slivers can be tapped for mana. Because of this ability, slivers have haste. And this ability makes it possible to sacrifice a sliver to gain two black mana. So let's begin by tapping this sliver for a mana. Then sacrifice it for two black mana. Suddenly we are netting one more mana each time we're activating the Sliver Queen's ability, meaning that with infinite mana we can generate infinite Sliver's tokens with haste and attack and win. And the commander for this deck is just simply Sliver Overlord, because for free mana you can search your library for any Sliver card and put that card into your hand, meaning that you can assemble this entire combo from the command zone with a bunch of mana. And I want to emphasize with an amazing amount of mana, and that's the problem. That is why this is never really going to come over something of that is semi-competitive. Because look here, first you need to activate this ability to find this sliver. Now 3 plus 2 makes 5. Then you need to pay 3 more mana and search a library for this sliver. So 3, that's 5, that's 10. Now we're up to 10 mana total, and we've only collected 2 creature cards so far. Then you can tap these two creature cards, that's fine, so on one mana, search library, then three more to suck to play this thing. Then you can tap these two to search one more, so one mana, and find the Slivy Queen at six. The grand total mana to win on the same turn by activating this ability and finding everything is 20 mana. That's impossible. So what you have to do is basically find them a little bit one at a time. So first find this one, pass the turn, cast this, then find this one, pass the turn and then assemble the rest. But when you're trying to do something like that, your opponents are simply going to interrupt you. They're gonna make sure that Sliver Overload dies, they're gonna make sure that this creature card dies before you have assembled the entire combo. And that's a problem. And that is why this deck is not really getting it in there. Sure, it is consistent, but it's a bit too slow. But there are some tricks to make it a little bit more achievable, making the assembling a little bit easier. So let's just think about it. If we have infinite mana, we will instantly assemble the entire combo. So let's look at these three cards I have right here. Paradox, Scepter and Intruder Alarm. With Isochron Scepter, we only need a two card combo called Dramatic Reversal and this artifact. And you have infinite mana if you have some Bird of Paradise and Soul Rings and etc etc. Some good mana rocks and mana dogs. Then you have infinite mana. Then you just cast your commander and research your deck for all the pieces you need and win the game. Alright, so here we have something. We have Paradox Engine or Intruder Alarm. Any one of these two will do the job. You have your commander in play and Bloom Tender. So let's tap Bloom Tender and gain one man of each color because a commander have all color identities. So we'll have five mana in mana pool. Use three of that mana to activate the Sliver Overlord. Search our library for this card. Then you spend two more mana, that last two mana we got from Bloom Tender, and cast this Trigger Paradox Engine, untap Bloom Tender. I think you see what's happening here. Tap him once more, three mana to search a library for a sliver. Let's find a sliver with haste. Cast it for the remaining two mana, trigger, untap, and now we have seven mana production. And gaining more slivers will basically just climb the, the ladder until we have assembled the entire combo. Now, I actually play slivers quite often. It's one of my let's say challenging semi-competitive deck that I kind of like to play when we're not playing that super competitive. When it's just like trying to show casual player the existence of a competitive deck. And the same thing happens every single time. They get so surprised and are still starting to question elves, slivers. You, you can't play elves in slivers, that's just strange. I mean, why do you want to play elves when you have slivers? You have basically misunderstood the entire concept of tribal. And tell, I will tell you this, I have no interest whatsoever of playing tribal. I am playing a deck as good as it possibly can be built. 
and that is why I am including elves. Also, training grounds. Training grounds will function when you're trying to win with Paradox Engine and Intruder Alarm because it will reduce the cost from 3 to 1. Extremely good card for this deck. And I, it works perfectly because in the end when we have so many elves and so many good mana rocks suddenly we have two one card combos inside the deck Intruder Alarm and Paradox Engine become one card combos for Sliver Overlord. The other thing I want to mention is that this deck becomes a really good control deck. So we have all five colored entities and Isochron Scepter is a win con inside this deck but we could imprint any of the really amazing control cards that is an instant speed CMC 2 or less and just control the board state. And I think that is quite fun. So sure, we do have the dramatic reversal, the wing con with this, but we could imprint a lot of cool stuff that is gonna have a lot of fun. Also, if I do this, we suddenly have infinite damage. So this is a three card combo. Um, actually, let, let's call it a two card combo. These two, and then what, whatever card you have here, that will basically just shut the game down. So if you have lightning bolt, that will be game. If you have a counter spell, your opponents can't cast spells, or they can't they can cast spells, but everything they do is gonna get counterspelled. And you can destroy all permanents, draw your entire deck, and potentially have infinite mana that will do the exact same thing. This will also draw your entire deck and gain infinite mana. One other big reason why slivers aren't really that good and only semi-competitive is that slivers aren't really that good. And I will tell you this, that I'm not playing a Sliver Tribal deck. I have a bunch of Slivers. Let's actually take a look on all the Slivers that I do play. So I play this thing, allows me to sacrifice a Sliver to gain two mana. This is part of the combo. Sliver Queen creates tokens. This is also part of the combo that you earlier saw. Then I have two Slivers that will be able to tap for mana. Or well, make Slivers capable of tapping for mana. I have two Slivers that will give my Slivers haste. These are also combo pieces. But after that, there's no more combo pieces in this deck. So here are some slivers that aren't really doing anything in the combo, but are in the deck because of other, well, cutesy reasons. This will give all my slivers shroud. And that is good when I wanna protect my combo pieces. This makes it possible for me to cast slivers in instant speed. All slivers gain flash, basically. And that is kinda good. It makes it possible for me to slowly, control-wise, uh, build my board state. I can go to an opponent's end step, activate this ability, and cast this creature card in instant speed. That is, uh, that's helpful. Then I have this, makes it possible to destroy artifacts and enchantments whenever a sliver comes into play. That is kinda good. This is also useful, I can sacrifice a sliver to destroy a permanent. I might actually say that this is definitely the worst sliver in the entire, entire deck. Uh, it's not that effective, it's mostly going to be used when someone is destroying the Sliver Overlord. So if I have this in play, this in play, someone destroys my commander, I can pay 3 mana to get a tiny value out of it. That's basically it, in most cases. Then I have this Sliver. Ah, extremely underused Sliver in my opinion. All Slivers have Provoke, which is an extremely old keyword. So what pro Provoke does is that Whenever a creature attacks, you can force a specific creature defending player controls to block this creature. Now take a look, this is a 7-7. This means that we can go hunting. This is the best tag team predator game strategy you can have. You can basically shut down creature cards for the eternity of the game. Because this doesn't require mana. Two mana to get this ability going. So cast this in your first main phase, go to your combat step, attack with your commander and activate to provoke. Force an opponent's commander to block and you're going to make sure that that commander is never going to see the light of day. Another sliver that have one sort of um, control power is this. So this is not a sliver. Well, you probably already know about this. Here's the trick. Free mana, gain control of target sliver. Tap this thing, make anything into a sliver and you steal that thing. So that's really good and quite cute. But that is also the end of the line. That's the big toolbox power this deck actually have. So even though Sliver Overlord have a lot of stuff going for him, a commander on five identities, a big stat line, a 7-7, a toolboxing power, he can search his library for a Sliver card. That's amazing! 
but the slivers aren't performing because the slivers toolboxing power isn't great. Sure, there are other slivers that have some great potential in toolboxing power, but in the end, I don't think they're that good. These four are the only toolbox slivers that I kind of like. I would rather have more Bird of Paradise than any of the current slivers that exist. However, if Wizards of the Coast would print, let's say, a good CDH slivers that would be good, even though it wasn't a sliver, then this commander would grow in power. Definitely. So my final verdict is this. Slivers, currently not so strong, but could grow in power. Really fun to play and have a lot of potential. Demands better slivers and uh, many, maybe some easier ways to assemble the combo that I showed you. Maybe some other sliver combos that don't demand so much mana. In the end though, I hope to see this commander to grow in power. It would be fun. It would be nice to have more five color identity commanders that are viable. Thank you so much for watching and have a great time. I'll see you guys in the next video.